everybody welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm going to be going through how you can paint some beautiful watercolor Christmas cards that will be really great gifts for friends and family not only will they be a nice card but also pieces of art that they can keep and treasure so I'm gonna be going through how you can paint a polar bear a robin winter trees and also a bauble on a nice Christmas tree with a snowy tree branch as well so anyway guys let's get straight into it First I want to take you through how to make the actual cards. So for this I am using the Arches cold pressed watercolour paper but you can use any watercolour paper that you have and I start off by measuring the width and height to see what size the paper is. And now I want to do my Christmas cards as squares so you want the width to be half the size of the length so that when they fold they are square. So I am doing mine 15 centimetres by 30 centimetres. Then you want to repeat the measuring out process with as many cards as you want to make. So I'm going to be doing four in this tutorial. I know it looks like I have three because I was only going to do three, but then I decided to do one more for you guys. So as you can see, I've just measured out the line where it's 15 centimeters for the width. Now we need to cut these out and get rid of that excess watercolor paper. So I'm taking my knife and I'm doing this on a cutting mat to make sure that my desk isn't ruined. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my Stanley knife to cut off that excess paper so that we have a really nice 15 centimeter by 30 centimeter sheet. Again, I'm repeating that for all of the four cards that I'm going to do this with. Now that we've cut all of our cards out, it is time to actually fold them up to make them into cards. So I'm going to take each one at a time and just very carefully fold them up. And to do this, I just match up the edges first and then push down to create that nice fold. It's pretty simple, not much else to say about that. But again, just repeat that process for all of your cards and then you'll have a lovely blank card to paint on top of. So once we've got all of these prepared, we're gonna get straight into our first painting, which is going to be the polar bear. This is my favorite one of the four. I personally love this one, so I decided to put it first. I'm starting off by using washi tape to give a nice border to the painting and the card and you can see that I've already done the sketch and it's just a polar bear on snow and I'll leave in the description a link to the website where I got these references from for the first three anyway and then I use a different reference for the fourth one. So I'm going to be using my Cotman watercolours for this and I'm first going in with some dark blue and I'm just going to be using this colour actually for the whole of this painting so it really is simple. And I pre-wet the sky bit of the painting and I'm just going in and tapping in this blue tone for the shadows of the sky. You can see I'm going horizontally and because it's wet it really bleeds out the paint nicely so it looks so nice and smooth and there's no harsh edges. I'm then intensifying some areas with a darker, more concentrated version of that same colour and just tapping these into a few areas. And that's literally all I'm doing for the sky, but to create a really cool pattern, I'm going in with some table salt and just sprinkling that all over the background. And this really does work magic as you'll see when it's dry, but just sprinkle it all around, just everywhere evenly. And now I'm going in and working on the snow. Now I didn't pre-wet the snow at all, I'm working wet on dry and I'm just using that same colour to actually go in and paint in some shadows for the snow. Again you can see I'm pretty much just doing lines that are curving with the shape and the dips of the snow and I'm being quite loose and a bit messy with it. I'm trying to have fun with these, you want to not worry too much about it, just have fun and be creative. I'm also darkening up a few areas as well, just a couple here and there, just to create a bit of contrast and variety. Now to go into the polar bear. The darkest areas for the polar bear is the eye, the nose, and also the ear. So I'm first just painting them in very carefully with a small paintbrush. And then I'm going in and starting to paint in the shadows to give structure to the face. As you can see, my paint isn't as concentrated when I'm doing this. And I'm just basically mapping in the basic shapes. I'm not worrying too much at all about detail. This is not trying to be a realistic piece, while well, photorealistic, it's trying to be fun and very loose and expressive. So I'm just mapping in the basic shadows and anatomy of the polar bear. I'm not trying to doing every little first stroke. 
I'm building up some more intense shadows on the polar bear as well. For example, between the toes on the feet of the polar bear, just getting in them and also some of the darker shadows. Again, the link for this reference is in the description so you can see exactly where the shadows on the polar bear are. There's a lot of shadow underneath by the neck and the body of the polar bear and there's quite a bit of shadow on the legs as well. Now I want to just add a couple of highlights so I'm going in with my white gouache and I'm just using this to really brighten up a few areas. For example the ear where it kind of got covered by the background and also adding a few highlights to the snow. But really, as you can see, I left a lot of the white paper showing through, which does make it really, really nice and bright. So you don't have to paint in everywhere. It's good to leave certain areas white. I'm also going in with a fine liner and just outlining the polar bear a bit. You can see how beautiful the effect that that salt created. It's so nice, so beautiful. One of my favorite things to do, especially for a snowy effect. And so that is pretty much it for the first painting. This was by far the quickest of the four. It took me under an hour to do this and it was very simple, but as you can see, the result is so beautiful and definitely something that a family member or a friend would really, really love. Now, just before we move on to our next painting, if you guys are finding this a bit fast and you really want to follow along in real time, get access to the sketch outline and reference and materials list, then I do have all four of these available on my Patreon in real time with all of the resources you need. And just for a small amount per month, you can get access to these tutorials as well as over 300 other real time tutorials for watercolors, colored pencil and charcoal charcoal. My Patreon is basically where I upload all of the full real time with voiceover tutorials to. So at the top of the description, you'll see a link. You can go over there and check it out and see exactly what I have to offer. But there are over 300 tutorials on there that you can follow along to. And I do talk through my whole process. So you really can learn to improve your skills and techniques, not only for painting, but also for drawing as well. So I really recommend you guys checking that out if you want to be the ultimate student. But anyway guys, let's get back to the tutorial. So now let's move on to our second painting, which is going to be a robin. And I thought I'd include a clip of me sketching this one out for you guys. So it's just gonna be a simple robin on a branch with snow on top of the branches, of course, cause it's Christmas. But I'm going to mainly be doing greens and oranges for this, for the background. So with this one, I am starting off by pre-wetting the whole of the painting, even the robin, just wetting the whole thing. And I recommend using a large brush for this. It makes it faster. And then because it's wet, we're gonna use the wet on wet method. This is really great if you want soft backgrounds. And I'm starting off by going in and adding greens to the background. So I'm doing this on basically all four corners really. And again, I will link the reference so you can see exactly what I'm following along to. I then wanna add some darker greens and I do like to work from light to dark with all of my paintings. And as you can see, I'm also leaving areas where I'm not adding any paint. Those white areas in between, and that really does help with the highlights. You need to preserve the highlights because all you can do is go darker with watercolors. It's very hard to then get it back to light. I then waited for it to dry. I pre-wet the whole thing. And as you can see, I'm building up even more shadows with dark greens and even mixing in a bit of brown, as you can see. As well as the green, I also want to go in and add some golden tones to make this more Christmassy and not just to make it boring and green. So I'm just tapping in some gold. You can see I'm basically just splattering it in there and because it's wet, the paper already, they will nicely disperse out to give some really nice soft effects. I'm also splattering in a bit of gouache as well and I'm tapping in even more gouache to give these sort of snowflake effects. As you can see, they're so beautiful. Now with gouache, it does dry darker than it looks when it's wet. So even though these like snowflake effects look quite bright at the moment, they will dry a bit darker and a bit more subtle. So I'm just tapping in a bit of more opaque gouache into the center just to make them a bit brighter. And because the gouache is wet, these will disperse out a bit and not be so harsh. I'm also adding some gouache to the top of the branches and I'm splattering even more of it into the background again to give more of a snowy look to the background. And because it is still wet, they will get softer. 
Now once you're happy with the background, wait for it to dry and then you can start working on the branches. If you don't wait for the background to dry, then the brown's just gonna merge in with the green and it will become very messy. So I'm starting off by layering nice light brown tones and then I'll work up to darker values. Because the tree is topped with snow, the branches are, you do wanna leave some white gaps to make it look like there's bits of snow settling onto the branches. And again, also just to add a bit of contrast. Remember, you can't go lighter, really, unless you add gouache, but it's always nice to leave some of the white paper peeping through. As you can see, I'm darkening up the bottom of the branches and I'm mixing some darker paint and I'm gonna go in and start to paint in the robin now. So the darkest areas on the robin are the eyes and the beak and that's where I like to start. I always like to start by getting in the eye. And then I'm gonna work on the chest of the bird which is very much warm tones so I'm mixing in a lot of oranges and just tapping in lots of that color as well. You can see I'm wetting the area first and then tapping in the oranges. And because it's wet, that area will bleed out. I'm slowly getting darker with the colors as well. So you can see that I'm building up to darker reddish brown tones, which I'm using to get in the shadows for the bird. And even though we're doing a very loose style, it is still very important to get in main core shadows for an animal in order to make it still look realistic to an extent and 3D, otherwise it's just going to look flat. I'm working on the rest of the bird, which is brown. I'm also adding in some blues just to add a bit more vibrancy there. And I'm slowly building up to darker values. I'm now going and finalizing some details on the branches and adding some gouache to top the branches with snow. Now, when I want something to look really white, I make sure that I'm not mixing in too much water into the gouache, otherwise it won't be as bright as it looks when it's wet. So you may think this looks bright enough, but if you have a lot of water, it will dry a lot more subtle. So make sure if you want something to be really opaque, don't mix in too much water into your gouache. You can see that I'm adding a few snowy branches into the background. I really wanted to give this painting a nice Christmassy festive vibe. So instead of just doing a robbing, I thought it was important to add snow to the branches and to find a reference that had a lot of snow in it as well with the robin. I'm also adding a few little highlights to the robin itself. As you can see, I'm using the gouache to create a few little feather details. And I'm also going in and darkening up the background to make the bird pop a bit more by adding more contrasting colors next to the bird. So I'm darkening up the background and I'm also just going in and you know tweaking things a little bit until I'm happy with them adding a few little signature white splatters which I do with every painting but that is pretty much it for the robin for this second painting I really love how this one turned out I think it looks really nice and cute and festive so now let's move on to our third painting which again is just going to be using one color very much like the polar bear it's going to be using the same color and we're going to be painting some wintry trees I'm starting off by wetting the whole of the paper and then I'm taking that same dark blue colour as we use for the polar bear painting and I'm working this throughout the sky and also for the snow as well. And you want to build up shadows within the snow, even though snow is white there's still going to be shadows to create the look of ripples of snow and you know where the snow falls and layers and creates dune like shapes. I'm also intensifying it with some more concentrated paint and then I waited for that all to dry so we can build up a second layer. I pre-wetted the whole of the area again and I'm just basically using darker versions of that color just to darken up areas. I do it very slowly as you can see, very much in layers and now I'm just working that paint through the darker areas. Once again, adding another layer with really intense dark versions of that dark blue now. And you can see that I'm working horizontally but at an angle throughout the sky. I'm also now going in and painting in some of the shadows for each of the trees. We're going to be painting very snowy trees. So all of the branches are covered in snow. So we're going to be using a lot of white gouache. But there are shadows in between each of the branches that I wanted to get in as well. 
I'm also creating a bit more shadow around the edges of the branches on the edges of the trees so that when we have our really bright tree it stands out. If the snow's white against the white tree it's not really going to make the tree stand out because everything will just merge in together. So if you're painting something that's really light, like snowy trees, you want to make sure that the areas next to them, like the sky, are darker in order to make the trees pop. So you can see that I'm going in again, working some darker colours throughout the sky, and I'm just dropping in some of the white gouache, like we did with the Robin painting, in order to create a very soft, snowy appearance to the painting. I'm also using the gouache to add highlights to the snow as well and to create some splatters. These will become a bit softer as well because the painting is wet. Now I wanna go and add all of the snow to my trees. So I'm using very thick opaque gouache and you can see that I'm just tapping it on to each of the branches. I do go horizontally when I'm doing that as well. Again, have fun with this. Don't worry too much if things aren't perfect. There's a lot of randomness with trees. They're not all the same. So you don't need to make every single tree look exactly the same. And you can see that I'm using a detailed brush just to tap on the gouache. Working on it branch at a time. I'm really looking at my reference to see how the branches basically are, you know, how they're arranged on the tree. I'm then working in between, I waited for that to dry and I'm working between all of those branches with even more of the dark blue paint to add more sort of dimension to the trees. The snowy branches aren't going to stand out if they're all just snowy. You need to have dark shadows in between them in order to make the snowy branches pop. I'm now going in with even more of that dark blue and I'm working it around the top of the trees, you know, adding some more shadow throughout the sky. To really add more contrast to the sky, I was feeling like it isn't quite dramatic enough. And it's really important if you're doing like a monochrome painting that you do have all different values of that colour. Not just the really highlighted areas, but you also need some intense shadows as well. So as you can see, I'm working in some more shadows throughout the painting, for example, for the darkest ripples of the snow. I'm also now going to build up some more highlights throughout the snow. And I keep switching between the gouache and also the darker paint to build up more shadows and then to add more highlights as well. I'm just darkening up some of the ripples on the snow and I'm going in with more gouache and just brightening up the trees even more. Because remember I said the gouache does tend to dry a bit darker so it may make you realise that you need your gouache to be more opaque in order to get the really highlighted branches. Finishing off with a few nice white splatters and I'm taking a white gel pen to make even more tiny details like bits of snow. But that is pretty much it for our third painting. Again, remember all of these are available in real time over on my Patreon. Just removing the border, that is one of the most satisfying parts for me. I love removing the tape and seeing that nice crisp edge. I really loved how this one turned out in the end. It's one of my favorites for sure. And now let's move on to our fourth and final painting, which is this more colorful ball ball on a Christmas tree painting. I'm starting off with masking fluid and I'm using this to mask in areas that are more detailed, for example, the gold on the ball ball and also bits of snow. So areas that I wanna preserve whilst I work on the rest of the painting. So this could be details that you want to preserve or highlights, for example, the bits of snow on the branches. I then wait for the masking fluid to dry and I go in and I pre-wet the whole of the paper once more. I do like to work wet on wet to start off with, especially with backgrounds. I'm mixing up a very dark green for the background. So this is the areas in between the branches. And in my reference that I took of my Christmas tree, it was very dark in between these areas. So I'm going straight in with some darker green paint by mixing a bit of green and that darker blue that we used before and even a bit of brown. I'm intensifying it even more with a darker version of that color. I'm now mixing up some gold and I'm adding this where I could see some of the lights, the Christmas lights showing through and giving that nice golden glow. And I'm also adding in some red for the blurred out red Christmas decoration in the background. 
I'm working even more on the Christmas decorations in the background. For example, there is this gold bauble that I wanted to build up more brown tones around the edges. And also with the red bauble, I wanted to add some darker reds as well to give them more of a 3D look, even if they are blurry. Now I want to go in and start to add in some little details for the branches of the Christmas tree. So you can see that I'm going in with some lighter green and just creating little wisps, little detailed lines to help build up the branches. And I'm going to repeat this process for all of the branches. And I did make it lighter that it, so that it stands out on top of the background as well. I also want to go in and add another layer to the background because when it dries, the red dried a bit lighter than I wanted. So I'm adding another layer. I'm going in and building up the basic red tones and then adding some shadows around the top and outsides of the ball ball as well. And I'm also working on another little icicle red Christmas decoration next to it. And I'm working on the shadow that's around that red icicle Christmas decoration. Now it's time to work on the main ball ball and I'm starting off by adding red to the whole of the ball ball. In the reference it was red and clear but I decided to make it red, all red in my painting. So you can see that I'm also tapping in some darker shadows mainly on the top and bottom of each section of this ball ball. So I don't just want it all to be red everywhere. You can see that I have lighter washes of the red and then darker shadows as well. Once you've let everything dry, you can go ahead and remove the masking fluid. I tried to use my fingers, but I found that it's so much easier if you use a cloth, like a tea towel. It comes off so much easier than with your fingers. My fingers were starting to feel very raw when I was using them. And now I wanted to go in and build up the details, which is harder to get with a paintbrush. I'm building them up with watercolour pencils instead. So I'm going in with this nice golden yellow tone to work in between the red of the ball ball. And I'm also using this to kind of darken up the cap. I don't know what that's called. The thing on top of the ball ball. I'm darkening that up as well. You can also go throughout certain areas of the ball ball and just refine any areas or darken up things if you want to. I feel like the pencils give you more control and then to make them less grainy you can go in and add water and it will just dissolve all of that colour out and make it look a lot more pigmented as well. So once I basically applied all of my watercolour pencils I just went and I activated them with water. You can see it makes the colour so much more rich once you add the water. Once I've finished blending out all of the watercolour pencils with the water, it's time to add some highlights with the white gouache. So I'm going in, it's very opaque, and I'm building up highlights on the ball ball, but mainly the snow as well on the branches. So I'm being very careful to paint the nice shiny highlight on the ball ball to give it more contrast and to make it look more like a reflective object as well. I'm also creating a little bit of a sparkly look on the cap of the ball ball and working it throughout that gold as well to give it more of a twinkle. One tip that I found was very useful is using the brush very dry with the gouache and just using the texture of the watercolour paper to help you create this sparkly twinkly look. It worked so well. I'm also topping the branches as you can see with even more gouache to give them more of a snowy look to them and I'm going throughout some of the other decorations in this painting and just adding a little bit of sparkle and highlights and reflections to those objects as well. I'm also adding a few little wisps with the gouache to create snowy little branches as well, snowy wisps and adding some final sparkle as well by splattering that white gouache all over the painting. And that is basically it for this painting and this is our final painting as well. So I really hope that you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what was your favourite out of the four paintings and are you going to create any of these as Christmas cards for family members? Remember if you want to see the real time tutorials of these they are available over on my Patreon. A link is at the top of the description and at the end in the end screen as well so you can go straight to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you you are in the festive mood already. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here and even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.